Last week, we discussed how can we improve our BNS graphics. The very first graphic page that is presented to somebody when they log into the BNS, the home page, how can we maximize the value of that page? And rather than just providing lots of link buttons, let's provide some overview information that it tells people at a very high level what is the status of the building. Previously to that, we discussed with our energy management systems, how can we better visualize all that data that we're collecting, for example, with virtual meters. In today's video, I wanted to expand on that discussion, and I wanted to talk about BMS graphic pages that need to be built specifically to maximize energy efficiency, optimization, and tuning. Now, there isn't a lot of time to build up all these extra graphics that we need during the construction phase. So if you're a service technician and your maintenance plan says that you're coming to site to do optimization and tuning, then it's probably you that needs to build all these graphics. And ideally, you were thinking about this three months before and you built up all these extra graphics and all the trends and the virtual meters, et cetera, et cetera, so that when you come to site, you're ready to go. If you come to site and you haven't done that, you probably can't do effective optimization and tuning without a whole bunch of planning work up front. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about just one control loop on the air handling, which is the supply air pressure reset strategy for the set point. Um, obviously, there's a lot of moving parts on an air handling unit. There's a bunch of things, but let's just talk about one. You can get the, the concept of what we're talking about here. So here in Australia, what we do is we dynamically reset the air hand unit's supply air pressure set point on the demand from the VAV boxes. So if it's not a design day and it's not 35 degrees Celsius outside and those VAVs are backing off, we will actually look at the VAV dampers and then have a control strategy that automatically adjusts the pressure set point down from, let's say the design was 200 pascals, we'll knock it down 190, 180, 170, 160, 150. And what we generally try and do is we try and keep those VAB dampers mostly open. And a very simple way to do it is to reset the pressure set point to try and keep the most open VAB box at 90% open. That's the most basic way. There's a lot of other smarter ways to do it, but that's one way to do it. And of course, with the supply temperature, we do the same thing. We reset the supply temperature set point on demand from the VAV boxes. So we're doing that all the time. So if you are the service technician, you come to site and you're doing tuning and optimization and you open up the, the graphic and you see, you double click on the, the pressure and the trend opens up and the trend shows you that in the morning it comes up nicely, it overshoots, undershoots and stabilizes for the whole day. And that trend has shown you that the pressure is controlling really well, that's great. And that's actually what tuning used to mean, you know, more than 10 years ago. Tuning used to be the adjustment of PI loops so that the control loops were steady. Like that is technically tuning, but not energy efficiency tuning. Energy efficiency tuning is looking at that pressure set point of 180 pascals that's controlling really well and thinking, that's great, but is that actually the right pressure set point? Could we knock that down 10 pascals or 20 pascals and the supply fan slow down and still have enough pressure to satisfy the VAVs and have good comfort control, have comfortable temperatures still on the floors. That's what optimization is. So to do that, you've got to go and look at all the VAV damper positions and determine, oh yeah, like you know, we can tweak it a bit more. So to do that, generally what you've got to do is, you've got to go and open up the graphic floor plan with all the VAV um, centers on it. And then if this air handling unit is the north air handling unit that supplies the north perimeter for 10 floors, and let's say there's two VAVs per floor, there's 20 VAVs, could, could be 30 or 40, you've got to go and open up that main floor plan graphic, and then you've got to open up that VAV pop-up and that VAV pop-up, and then write down the damper position. So a floor plan takes around eight seconds to populate, and I guess you need about five seconds 
each. That's that's five, ten, that's twenty seconds, and you've got ten floors. That's two hundred seconds. Plus, you've got to write the value down and think. So I reckon it would take between five minutes and ten minutes for you to go and check what are all the dampers doing associated to this one AHU. Now, let me just stop there for a second, right? In Australia, we have things called VAV summary pages, which for the whole floor has all the VAVs in the summary page. You know, Vmin, Vmax, volume, set point, the volume, everything. That's a horizontal, that's a floor summary page. That doesn't help us. We need to have summary pages for the air handling unit. So what we need to do is, on this AHU graphic, we need a button, which I tend to call the engineering page. You click on that, this other page opens up, and on there, you map the VAV damper position for all 20 or 30 or 40 VAVs on that one page. So you can very quickly open the engineering page and see, oh, okay, for this north air handling unit, at 180 pascals, all the dampers are sitting happy at around 50%. So you could then you know, log into your controller and your you could tweak your control strategy points. You can adjust the parameters. So as you adjust the parameters, you can like influence how the strategy reacts. So what happens now is you, you make a few changes and you see the pressure set point drop from 180 to 170. And 10 minutes later to 160. And you're watching the engineering page and you see that all those dampers for the VAVs slowly start to open. And you tweak it and it opens some more and you tweak it some more. And you, you, you might go too far. And what happens is it comes down too far, down to say 150, 140, 130 pascals. And the dampers are opening up because there's not much pressure there, there's less pressure. And you might see that five or six VAVs, the dampers get to 100%. They're starved of air. We have low volume and then we have temperature problems. So when you see that, you're like, oh, okay, I've gone too far. Let me adjust that back one, back another one. And the pressure comes up, comes up. So energy efficiency tuning is adjusting smart control strategies that the AHU is providing the right amount of pressure and temperature for the demand, not too much. And the same thing applies for your temperature reset strategy. Whatever your design is to do that, you might need to go and map 20, 30, 40 temperature sensors on that page. Because remember, we need all the temperatures for all the VAVs associated to the air handling We don't need the temperatures across the floor because there's six different AHUs on there at least, maybe. That's reasonably easy. So I like to call that in my mind stage one optimization. Stage one optimization is when you are tweaking your control strategy to get the supply temperature and pressure and all the other things on the AHUs and the chillers and the boilers and the cooling towers, everything. Stage one optimization is adjusting those parameters so that that control system is optimized for energy efficiency. We're, delivering, we're using just enough power, electricity on fans, chilled water and hot water, using just enough, not too much, to achieve what the zone requires for good or reasonable or really acceptable temperature control. Stage two optimization is when it gets a little bit more complicated. So maybe in the first year of your maintenance program, your optimization program, you, you build these extra graphics, you build the virtual meters, you build the trends, and you do stage one optimization. Stage two optimization is when you start to think about how one system affects other systems. So I have this idea, my opinion is that the supply air temperature on the air hand unit indirectly affects the AHU fan speed. Have a think about that for a second. The AHU temperature affects the fan speed. So as a test, and do this. Next week, when you're doing maintenance, do this. Go to your air hand unit and double click or right click and override the supply air temperature set point down two degrees Celsius. As soon as you do that, the AHU cooling valve opens, the supply temperature drops two degrees, and that cold air goes through the AHU, down the north perimeter, out of those 20 or 30 VAV boxes, and that 
slightly cooler air goes onto the zone temperature sensor for the VAV box. As soon as that happens, the VAV box says, hey, like, I need less cooling. It's getting cold in here. And that VAV damper closes slightly. All of them will close slightly. You'll see those dampers probably close 10%. And as soon as those VAVs, all of them close a little bit, the duct pressure goes up and the AHU supply fan slows down 5%. And the tracking return fan slows down 5%. So by you dropping the AHU supply temperature set point just a little bit, if you wait long enough, there's no other issues, you should see the fans slow down a little bit. Now I see people get a bit too optimistic with this and they drive the AHUs down to 12 degrees Celsius. Yes, the fans slow down, but a lot of problems happen, which we won't get into now. The trick here is, and this is what stage optimization is, year one, stage one. In year two, you have learned a lot and you're very excited about energy efficiency. You want to try some new things. You want to get smarter at this. You want to push the boundaries more and more and more. So now you start adjusting, tweaking your air halyard supply air temperature reset strategy to be slightly faster reacting than the pressure reset strategy. There's still a sort of independent sort of, but you're making the supply air temperature drop just a little bit quicker than it might reset the pressure set point. So you're dynamically adjusting it to try and manipulate a slightly fast acting temperature control loop and a slower pressure control loop. And that's pretty tricky, like there's no doubt about it. Like me saying this is one thing, it's gonna take you months to work that out. It'll t it might take you a year to get that right. But year two in our optimization program is where you have fixed lots of other things in year one, stabilize these loops, optimize them individually, more graphics, virtual meters, better trends, all the other sorts of stuff we're gonna do. And in year two, when you come to do maintenance, and we shouldn't call it maintenance, that's the wrong word for it. We have to do building optimization. Um, you're focusing on this and you're thinking about it all the time. It'll take you years to master this, but that's when we are providing real value to our clients. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, that sounds great, Bryce, but as soon as that AHU supply temperature dropped one or two degrees and the cooling valve opened 10%, the chill water system pressure dropped and those big pumps in the chiller plant room just sped up. So as we optimized the air handling units, it appears to give an, have a negative impact on the main chiller plant. And that is true, because we need more cooling capacity to drop this temperature one or two degrees. My personal opinion, rightly or wrongly, is that with these very efficient chillers we have nowadays, and in this centralized chill water plant, I think it's worth it to chew up a little bit more power in the chiller plant room with the result that all of our VAV AHUs, all of them, the supply and return fans run a little bit slower every day for the whole year. I think it's worth it. But here's the point, here's the actual point of this, right? It isn't about what I just said about this strategy and that strategy. It's not about that. It's about all of us starting to think more about this, about how systems affect each other. So in one building, when you, when you tune this thing, it'll be very obvious that the, the energy we save on the AHUs is definitely worth the extra bit of power in the chillers. There will be other buildings that have old chillers that aren't as energy efficient, and it might not work as well. You might just drop it, the supply temperature, one degree or a half a degree, just be gentle. So tuning is not looking for broken things. Value is not looking for broken things through maintenance. Value is all this stuff. It's very difficult. It will take you years. You have years to do it. It's not a rush. Energy efficiency is a journey. It's not a, a mini project. Build the graphics, build the trends, get ready, optimize the loops independently in year one, in year two and year three. Tweak those little things because you'll get smarter at it. If you want some help understanding advanced energy efficient control strategies, please look in the description below for the online course.